quadratic functions using complete the square to convert standard form to vertex form and graph with the vertex form. What are they? Functions are a relation from a set of inputs to a set of outputs where each input maps exactly to one output. Why? Helps to focus light for long distances. Interesting fact, toads do not have teeth, so they do not chew their food. Instead, swallow it whole. Now, let's take a look at the forms we're going to discuss in today's video. First, we have the standard form, where we have f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are real numbers, where a cannot equal to zero. Second, we have the vertex form, where we have f of x is equal to a times the quantity of x minus h squared plus k, for a cannot equal to zero is a parabola that has a vertex hk and a vertical axis. Also, the parabola goes upward if a is greater than zero or downward if a is less than zero. Now, let's see what our graphs will look like when a is positive or negative. If a is positive, then our graph opens upward like the one on the left. And if a is negative, our graph opens downward like the one on the right. Now, let's look at the two theorems that you can use to check our work. The first one is the theorem of locating the vertex of a parabola, and you can use negative b over 2a to find the x-coordinate of the vertex. And the second theorem tells us we have a maximum if a is negative and a minimum if a is positive. And to find the maximum or minimum, we use the value of negative b over 2a and substitute it into f of x to find the y-coordinate of the vertex. Now. Let's look at the forms we could have for a quadratic function. One is the vertex form. Two is the factored form or intercept form. And three is the standard form. There are formulas here, but you don't have to memorize them. If you know your definitions and practice a bit, finding the vertex and x-intercepts will become second nature. Now, let's take a look at the examples we're going to discuss in today's video. Let's take a closer look at example one. Now, let's read the steps. Step one, factor out a if need be. Step two, add the term to both sides. Step three, do I need to multiply the term? Step four, simplify. Step five, factor. Now, let's read the question. Express f of x, where we have f of x is equal to x squared minus three x plus five in the vertex form and graph. Now. Let's convert this quadratic function into vertex form using complete the square. In this case, a is 1, so we don't need to factor anything out. The next step is to add the same number on each side. How do we think we do that? That's correct. We add b over 2 squared to both sides. In this case, b is negative 3. So now we have negative 3 half squared plus f of x is equal to the quantity of x squared minus 3x plus negative 3 halves squared plus 5. Now, let's simplify negative 3 halves squared to 9 fourths. Let's subtract 9 fourths on both sides. Now we can factor x squared minus 3x plus 9 fourths to the quantity of x minus 3 halves squared, since we have a perfect squared. And 5 minus 9 fourths is 11 fourths. So now we have f of x is equal to the quantity of x minus 3 halves squared plus 11 fourths. Where do we think the minus 3 halves in the parentheses comes from? That's correct, the b over 2. Now we have the quadratic function in vertex form. Now let's find the x-intercepts. Whoa, our steps have changed. Let's read them. Step 1. Set f of x to 0. Step 2, solve for x. Step 3, is the radicand positive, negative, or 0? Step 4, create the x-intercepts. Step 5, if none, create an xy table. What do we think is another name for x-intercepts? That's correct, zeros. So we can set the output to 0 and solve for x. Let's subtract 11 fourths on both sides. Now we can square root both sides, so we have plus or minus the square root of negative 11 fourths is equal to x minus 3 halves. 
We can stop here because we have a negative radicand. What do we think that means? That's correct. We don't have any real solutions, so our graph does not cross the x-axis. What do we think is the next step? That's correct. We need to create an x-y table. Whoa! Our steps have changed. Let's read them. Step 1. Create an x-y table. Step 2. Find the vertex. Step 3. Pick one point above and below. Step 4. Find f of x or y. Step 5. Graph. Well, let's start the x-y table. We already know one point, the vertex. What do we think is the vertex? That's correct. The point, 3 halves, 11 fourths. Do we think that is a maximum or a minimum? That is correct. We have a minimum because A is positive, so the graph goes up. Let's plot the vertex. Now we need to choose one point above and one point below the vertex. Notice that the inputs are the same distance away from the vertex. Why do we think we did that? That's correct. Quadratic functions are symmetric. So both of those outputs will be the same. Let's start with 1 half. Let's substitute 1 half into the function. So we have the quantity of 1 half minus 3 halves squared plus 11 fourths. And 1 half minus 3 halves is negative 2 halves. And negative 2 halves squared is 4 fourths. And 4 fourths plus 11 fourths is 15 fourths. And that is the output for 1 half. Which means the output for 5 halves is also 15 fourths. And here is the work to show you why. Now we have two more points. Let's go ahead and plot them. Let's connect the dots. That is example 1. Let's move on to example 2. Whoa, the steps have changed. Let's read them. Step 1, factor out A if need be. Step 2, add the term to both sides. Step 3, do I need to multiply the term? Step 4, simplify. Step 5, factor. Now, let's read the question. Express f of x, where we have f of x is equal to negative x squared minus 4x plus 2 in the vertex form and graph. Now, let's convert this quadratic function into vertex form using complete the square. In this case, a is negative 1. So we need to factor out the negative 1 from the first two terms to make the coefficient in front of x squared 1. The next step is to add the same number on each side. How do we think we do that? That's correct. We add b over 2 squared to both sides. In this case, b is 4, because we use the numbers inside the parentheses. So now we have a negative of 4 half squared plus f of x is equal to a negative of the quantity of x squared plus 4x plus 4 half squared plus 2. Notice, on the left side, we have a negative out in front of the parentheses. Why do we think that is? That's correct. There's a negative out in front of the parentheses on the right side as well. If we distribute the negative, then the new terms will match. Now, let's simplify 4 over 2 squared to 4. Let's add 4 on both sides. Now we can factor x squared plus 4x plus 4 to the quantity of x plus 2 squared, since we have a perfect squared. And 2 plus 4 is 6. So now we have f of x is equal to the negative of the quantity of x plus 2 squared plus 6. Where do we think the plus 2 in the parentheses comes from? That's correct, the b over 2. Now we have the quadratic function in vertex form. Now, let's find the x-intercepts. Whoa, the steps have changed. Let's read them. Step 1, set f of x to 0. Step 2, solve for x. Step 3, is the radicand positive, negative, or 0? Step 4, create the x-intercepts. Step 5, plot and graph. This time, we're going to change things up 
by plotting the vertex first. What do we think is the vertex? That's correct, the point negative 2, 6. Do we think that is a maximum or minimum? That's correct, we have a maximum because A is negative. So the graph goes down, which means our graph will cross the x-axis. So we will have two real solutions. Now, let's find the x-intercepts. What do we think is another name for x-intercepts? That's correct, zeros. So we can set the output to zero and solve for x. Let's subtract 6 on both sides. Let's divide both sides by negative 1. Let's take the square root on both sides. Let's subtract 2 on both sides. So now we have x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 6. So the first x-intercept is the point negative 2 minus square root of 6 is 0. Let's plot it. What do we think is the second x-intercept? That's correct. The point negative 2 plus square root of 6 is 0. Now let's plot it. Let's connect the dots. And that is example 2. Let's move on to example 3. Whoa, the steps have changed. Let's read them. Step 1, factor out A if need be. Step 2, add the term to both sides. Step 3, do I need to multiply the term? Step 4, simplify. Step 5, factor. Now, let's read the question. I express f of x, where we have f of x is equal to 3x squared minus 6x minus 3. Now, let's convert this quadratic function into vertex form using complete the square. In this case, a is 3. So we need to factor out the 3 from the first two terms to make the coefficient in front of x squared 1. The next step is to add the same number on each side. How do we think we do that? That's correct. We add b over 2 squared to both sides. In this case, b is negative 2 because we use the numbers inside the parentheses. So now we have 3 times negative 2 halves squared plus f of x is equal to 3 times the quantity of x squared minus 2x plus negative 2 halves squared minus 3. Notice, on the left side, we have a 3 out in front of the parentheses. Why do we think that is? That's correct. There's a 3 out in front of the parentheses on the right side as well. If we distribute the 3, then the new terms will match. Now, let's simplify negative 2 halves squared to 1. Let's subtract 3 on both sides. Now we can factor x squared minus 2x plus 1 to the quantity of x minus 1 squared, since we have a perfect square. And minus 3 minus 3 is minus 6. So now we have f of x is equal to 3 times the quantity of x minus 1 squared minus 6. Where do we think the minus 1 in the parentheses comes from? That's correct, the b over 2. Now we have the quadratic function in vertex form. Now, let's find the x-intercepts. Whoa, the steps have changed. Let's read them. Step 1, set f of x to 0. Step 2, solve for x. Step 3, is the radicand positive, negative, or 0? Step 4, create the x-intercepts. Step 5, plot and graph. Once again, we're going to change things up by plotting the vertex first. What do we think is the vertex? That's correct, the point 1, negative 6. Do we think that is a maximum or minimum? That is correct, we have a minimum, because A is positive. So the graph goes up, which means our graph will cross the x-axis. So we will have two real solutions. Now let's find the x-intercepts. What do we think is another name for x-intercepts? That's correct, zeros. So we can set the output to 0 and solve for x. Let's add 6 to both sides. Let's divide both sides by 3. Now let's take the square root on both sides. Now let's add 1 to both sides. So now we have x is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 2. So the first x-intercept is the point 1 minus the square root of 2 
0. Let's plot it. What do we think is the second x-intercept? That's correct. The point 1 plus the square root of 2, 0. Now, let's plot it. Let's connect the dots. That is example 3. Now, it is your turn. So go ahead and pause the video here so you can take your time to answer this question. And I'll show you the results in 3, 2, and 1. Here's how to find the vertex form. And here's how to graph it. Did you get it correct? Awesome. If not, there's always tomorrow.